Thanks for your patience, everyone, tonight. Um, setting up custom hardware in a foreign environment, which is called meeting room or the seminar room up at university, is always a bit of a challenge. Uh, but we're finally there, so thanks for sticking with us. And I hope everyone had dinner by now. Um, I will hand over to Rod, who will basically present how he's using Google um, Voice Text in um, Google Documents um, in order to speed up his writing compared since he, just like so many of us, aren't touch typers, me included, um, they can be actually quite useful for, um, especially when the eyesight is failing, um, making it a bit easier, sort of like writing longer documents when you actually can just use an audio interface. And maybe slowly um, Star Trek and Star Wars voice interfaces are slowly coming um, to become reality and it's going to be a little bit more useful, especially for for um, seniors like Rod, for instance. So without much further ado, I will hand over to Rod. Uh, um, what I was wanting to do is to show you our audio module that uh, the uh, the key to the whole thing is that Google needs to have control of the microphone for input. Otherwise, it can't be it can't work. And it turns out that the Uh, it, can, it turns out that the uh, the audio module is monitoring the HDMI input, and so you have to turn that off, and then. Uh, then the Google uh, can get control of the the module that it needs the driver. Um, just maybe Rod, just point out that at the moment you've got a um, what is it, Logitech camera and and microphone on top of this monitor. So yes. that's that's the USB based microphone. Will be um, what will pick up the audio, or is picking it up now? Yeah. Um, so, so, so this is the uh, the volume control module, and it's now set up so that it can uh, monitor the microphone, the webcam microphone. Uh, but in order to get it there, uh, what we had to do was to go to the to go to the uh, built-in audio HDMI output there and actually turn that off uh, and then what it does is it monitors, it monitors the dummy output so you can't get rid of the dummy output. Uh, for why it does that, I don't know, but it does. Uh, so, but you can turn it to silence like that. So that now frees the HDMI and allows 
Google takes to video to uh, at last take control of the, the uh, yeah. yes. take control of the uh, just click on the screen I think yeah, yes, that's right. Yes, so now we should be able to show you. Just just point out that you've had to log into your Google account and select Google Docs. Right? Yes. So, uh, and then this is a, yes, this is a big Google Doc. Uh, it only works in Google Docs. Uh, so, you, and you have to use Chrome browser. Uh, so then if you go to tools, voice typing, and then click to speak. So we, can always, we can't, couldn't see the bottom of the menu? Oh, okay. Do everything up here. <laughs> yeah, I see. Oh. Uh, um. Yes, so that should start. Uh, translating my speech to text. Uh, it's quite a trick to uh, speak clearly and uh, yes, uh, in in the way that it can easily recognize. Oh. Uh, I'm just going to reduce the width of your screen a little bit. It seems to guess how long a word <laughs> it's, it's picking. Yeah. It's picking up your... Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you see it is a gap, and then it fills in the word that exactly goes in that gap. What word? Not wrapping. That's okay. Move down now. Right at the top. Scroll up. Up, up. Up, up. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 that's it. Yep. Uh, clear it out. And we'll start again. Mm. We will oh, start again. Oh. Now the microphone's turned off. The legal files. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We turned the microphone on. Okay. So we're away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Uh, now it's working again. Uh, well, it's gone. No, it's well, when I. That was on then. Yeah. Initiate self destruct. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's. Uh, the link between it's, it's, no, it's my voice, Rod's voice, your voice. It, it, it's getting. It's getting. It's getting. It's getting. It's so now let's start again and uh, just it's demonstrate. It's already got a guess. Yeah, it's not scrolling down the way it we. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, it's, it's like it knows it's going to go there. <laughs> it's just pretending to use a bit of time thinking of it. Yes. So the trick is to. Speak slowly and clearly, and it should work the way it's supposed to. One thing I found was a problem is that uh, it wouldn't recognize the punctuation marks the way I uh, wanted it to, uh, and it Turns out that I was looking at a, a how-to, American one, 
uh, in the cell uh, commands, comma, full stop. Period. You got to say period. Period. Yes, comma, period. Exclamation point. <laughs> Not exclamation mark. So, uh, it, it, it turns out, uh, Google voice to type is clever enough for, to get the location here and it uses full stop oh, instead of period. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, so, um, to start again, see the, <laughs> yes, it's, it's surprising how well it picks up things. Especially from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. New line. Let's try again. Anti disestablishmentarianism. Yeah, well, it's uh, best no. to stick with the uh, ordinary things can't, can't until you uh, get used to it. New line. Let's carry on. I think we've scrolled off the screen. Um, Gold. 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 <laughs> um, yes, uh, well, uh, see if I can uh, find the documents that I was uh, using that are the most useful. Um, I'll just have to uh, start another, another file. Um, so, um, yes, so, um, now let me think, uh, this is a report that was open a file. You mean a new document? Uh, no, well, a uh, one that's uh, in it's in the my drive. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Click on hide the bottom there. Don't want to show that screen that we've got. Yeah, yes, that's right. Uh, I think that's bringing that order in there. Hmm? 
Yeah, that's yeah. it. Let's see in between. In between. Yeah, that's great. Do you click on that to open the document? Yeah, that's the one I wanted to leave it. Uh, what is that one? See, we're still back up. Back up, brother. Mm. Mm. There's a name underneath each thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I uh, I had it all worked out in time, but uh, yes, it's, uh, Got, isn't it? That's the same That's one. The same one that, yeah. yeah, thought so. What's this? What I want is the. Uh... Even though it wasn't saved, it's auto saved, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. According to this, the stop will stop recording and say clear, delete the last sentence. Yes, there's, uh, there's a whole other series of uh, Google test. Hmm. You should be able to say smiley emoji. Yeah. Um, which is that when you've got the... Oh, I just, I just did a Google search on um, um, commands of ETT document again. Mm. So if you say stop, it doesn't because you know Telegram mm -hmm. speed stop is a full stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to go on the tab BTT top right? Mm. That's the document you were for. Yeah. Yeah. Click on that. No, and then we can get rid of turn that on the turn on the microphone. Turn on the microphone. Do I type yes and click someone? Try clear all. Clear all. <laughs> yeah, it's easier said than that. Mm -hmm. It is easier said than done. <laughs> Do you have to use Google? Google, stop. No, it's not the way to do it. What do you do with? Uh, Doesn't like me. Mm, thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's in there. Oh, this, uh, what is this is running on the custom GPU basic. Not necessarily. There's you can run tens of the line in JavaScript. Okay. Client side potentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, depending on how sophisticated it is, it might have to run on some larger things in the cloud But I'm quite impressed, to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, how well it's actually picking up, and that it takes the context into account in order to determine what will be the most likely words. So, 
not just plain, oh, here's word after word, but really sort of like the context of where not always right, but you can always fix things up afterwards if you at least get 90, 95% of your text right. That's already quite a big saving if you can just talk. But, um, but it's recording me so you can transcribe them automatically, our meetings. So this is one, uh, one of the uh, how-to documents that I uh, found. Uh, it was very useful except for the uh, putting me wrong about saying period instead of, mm. instead of full stop because uh, that's what made it difficult for me to uh, to find the uh, uh, to get the commands punctuation commands to work, but uh, it's uh, uh, got how to use voice commands, come more period when appropriate. So, say new paragraph to start a new paragraph and keep speaking new line to continue speaking you you could see that one was working mm. when i was dictating uh, and the, the other one uh, another one is important one is select so say select and then say what you want it to select uh, and then you can uh, do various things to it uh, for example you can say select such and such and then delete or uh, uh, various other things now you see you couldn't create a document like this in speech and text mm, yeah it's a little bit difficult yes actually it's surprising how, 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 how much you could do once you really got it going uh, so uh, so this is uh, how to use voice formatting. Yes, you can say so select is the is the uh, the key thing. So select, and then you say bold to make it bold. Unselect, then say underline to underline, and so on. Uh, apply heading one uh, and so on Oops, I don't know what's happened there yes so uh, there's more about how to do that and uh, I, th I found that this was uh, very useful pro tips for using voice type I can speak at a clear and moderate pace so that the algorithm can pick up your words and commands. Try to write a paragraph at a time and then go back to edit words and phrases later. Use a good microphone. Well, it's amazing how well it's done with this thing. Uh, uh, and so on. Uh, and this one was particularly useful. Make the undo command your friend. Uh, get comfortable with using select and the unselect commands. Uh, and finally, if you don't have to stop using the mouse and keyboard. Uh, uh, you can... Uh, uh, challenge to try and get as much as possible done easily with the uh, voice to type and but uh, uh, keep on using the other um, now yes and the other one is uh, yeah, Google's documentation so this is the uh, the other one. Uh, 
so uh, it's got a uh, pretty complete uh, way of, uh, uh, of using all the commands and things. So that's select, make select your, your, your uh, get really familiar with it and uh, that's telling you all the things that you can do with it. Uh, similarly, format your document. Select none. So you just said the word none, and then you can select the video. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you can uh, you can use formatting commands, apply heading one to six, normal, subtitle, title, blah blah blah. Yes. And then uh, you see you you can do just about anything if you uh, uh, if you uh, use select and uh, go on doing it. Uh, um, you can even add tables and things. Uh, move around your document. Yes, you can uh, go to end of paragraph, start of column. Start of line, start of row, step, so on. Go to next, and so on. So uh, you can really uh, do just about anything if you've got uh, really going on it. I think. Anyway. It also seems to have, for example, I've demonstrated to my daughter, and she she um, was doing it on her laptop, and well, and. Uh, she sort of said, you know, um, type this out or something like that, and that came out. And then she giggled because it, it, it came out exactly what she said. But it didn't try and put giggle, giggle, giggle. It, it, it knew to, okay, that's it, it, that, it that's to it. And then, yeah. then she went, ha, 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 and sure enough, it put ha, ha, ha. So uh, it, it, it seems to consider background noise and ignore it. Or, Yes, it's it, it, it's really very good at uh, ignoring background noise uh, in in general. Uh, it, it, I accidentally left the radio on uh, quite loud, <laughs> but it seemed to me well. It, it did uh, stop it from being as accurate as it was, but uh, it, it managed to uh, carry on and. In spite of that, great. Right. Cool. Just one other thing is, it also works with Chromium. You know, if you install yeah, Chromium. right. Since Chrome is downstream from Chromium, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it doesn't in Firefox. Is that no. right? No, no okay. you, you have to be. Yeah, it, 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 has, it has to be. It has to be using Chromium browser, and it has to be. A, a Google Doc. Yeah. yeah. Why does it have to be browser specific at all? Is it be a because it's using API rather than open standard. If if you go with um, Firefox into Google Docs, right, then when you click on the tools menu, there's no voice typing option there. What if you lie about your user agent? Oh, you, I mean, you can probably fool it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I doubt it uh, because it's using well, Google's artificial intelligence. What, what APIs are they using that are creating it? Because mm -hmm. they're just audio. Yeah, but it's their own. They can probably control it, but that's allowed or not. It's got to be a Google Doc. And yeah, yeah, which is accessible for any browser. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. APIs, what browser APIs are they using? Because all the smarts is on their server side. Right? Yeah. Receiving audio from your browser, which you need browser. Mm -hmm. But with Google Docs, they can control whether you can access to it or not. Yeah, but Google Docs is a server side function. Yeah. Oh, it's the client side. But that. What's the client? Yeah. There's a lot of JavaScript running on the client side.
But with Google Docs, you can use Google Docs with Dropbox. Yes, but I'm not sure whether you get the full set actually. I mean, I've had it now multiple times that sites start to look a bit funny sometimes with Firefox. Okay. With everyone jumping ship with Chrome because they are starting to move away from ad blockers, well, Firefox might rise again to the ashes. <laughs> Yes. Anyhow, um, um, still very much impressed what you can do. Um, and since Rod was showing off the flashy things, um, a couple months ago, Ian was presenting. You can play around with your microphone, I turn mine on. I turn off the microphone? <laughs> Mm -hmm. If you go behind here, go back to the left, right on the left, and then turn right All right. I'll make myself present, don't worry. I am. Yep. Um, so that was, I presume everyone can hear me again. Um, Ian can probably test whether he can hear me. Yep. Um, so that's sort of like the flashy side of things. Um, a couple of months ago, I think Ian was presenting at the Python meetup, um, Kolki STT, uh, which is a open source framework um, that it's yeah, there's Koki STT and TTS. So, but since we're doing speech to text, I'm just looking at that. So that's sort of like a deep learning toolkit that mainly sits on Baidu's Deep Speech, um, which Firefox used to develop as well for a while and then the whole team got laid off and then think Koki STT is sort of like the um, more or less successor of that. Um, at least Mozilla is still pursuing, <coughs> bless you, is still pursuing their um, common voice um, audio recordings and whatnot. That's basically collecting data that you can actually build these models and they usually need to have a lot of data. Um, So, um, Ian, do you want to switch over projector to the room PC? So, might be maybe a bit of a bigger screen then for the audience here. You're good. Yep. So, yeah, Koki TTS um, allows you basically to do things like that. Um, and I've been actually using that at work for research related things. Um, but today, um, Um, in sort of like an open source land. So I did create Docker images for Koki STT and the other ones. Um, and so there's basically two, one for actually training models, which we don't need to do because Koki also makes um, an English model available, which you can actually use. It's actually a checkpoint, so you need to actually convert it to a TensorFlow light model. But that TensorFlow light model, you can then actually use uh, in theory in your own application. But f to keep things simpler, I actually just used a Docker container for that, so I don't have to worry about any dependencies. Um, and so, what actually happens, I was looking on the weekend for libraries where I can actually do audio recording 
um, in Python, which is something I've never actually done before. So I have basically over here on the right, I have my Koki STT Docker <coughs> container, which can actually transcribe WAV files into text. Um, and then I need something that I can use for actually recording through a microphone. I came across the sound device library in Python. I know it's a little bit more Python than actually Linux, but we're running the Docker container on Linux, so there you go. Um, and the communication basically then runs via Redis, an in-memory database or message broker, depending on how you look at it. Um, so the user interface written in GTK, in Python I know, um, basically records the audio, sends it via Redis, the Docker container listens on a particular channel, grabs the wave um, data, transcribes it in theory, and then sends back the transcript, and the GTK GUI basically then displays that. So that's the rough overview of that. Um, so I'm not quite 100% sure um, whether it will all work um, with audio and whatnot. So I'm just making some fonts here a bit larger. Is, is Redis uh, an easy way to do that? Because if you just watch a directory, um, I wrote a Python binding for IMI. Yep. Yes, you can do these things, but in order not to wear out SSDs when you're doing sort of like thousands and thousands of these, oh. in memory is sort of like uh, the better alternative, I would say. Well, you can create a temp, a temp file System, which is in memory anyway. Which you can. All right. So up here, um, I basically um, running basically my Docker container. Um, something that I wrote, sort of like that. It just sort of like listens. It's just um, that's sort of like the um, name of the Docker image that I'm using. That's the, the script that I'm running. And I'm basically just listening on that particular audio incoming channel, and I'm sending basically whatever whatever I can transcribe basically on another channel out, and that's the sort of like the English model that I've uh, converted and use. Um, so we can basically see, and it's in verbose mode, so we can actually see if actually data is coming through and whatnot. Um, down here, I'm actually listening also on the transcript channel, whether anything's coming through. You can see that I also tried Hello and Hello World already before. Um, to make it easier, first test, I'm basically just sending an audio file in. So um, I am just sort of like, this is a little tool that I wrote for broadcasting on the audio channel, a binary file, which I've previously uh, pre-recorded. And that, I believe, just says Hello World. So if I send that through again, you can see it's progress processing up there, and yep, it really did hello world there. Um, so that's sort of like the basics that the Docker container is integrated, but we wanted to have a user interface. Um, and I have a little GTK one for that, and that is the interface. I'm just clearing that. So I'm not quite sure whether it works with um, BBB recording as well, so we'll just see what happens. So I've set it up that it basically records three seconds of audio and then sends it off. How are you? Thank you. Well, thank you, but not thank you, but close enough, sorry. Um, it's a bit tricky here making the font larger, but um, so it's getting there, um, but it's not as flash, so I basically have to say for how long it will record things. Um, the font is too small. Yes, yeah, not the font, but maybe it's, uh, I'm talking with a mask on, maybe it's a bit muffled and I can't really understand that properly. But um, I thought that was sort of like, um, something relatively easy to do. Unfortunately, it took me a few hours longer than I thought it would um, with sort of like running uh, multiple threads and whatnot that actually things don't, uh, that they actually work nicely together with GTK. So that was a little bit trickier. But um, in the end of the, at the end of the day, I had to, it's like 
the same problem that we had with, with Rod as well, sort of like the audio setup is always a bit finicky and you have to make sure, well, at least with this one, I actually had to crank up my audio gain quite a bit um, that it would actually record that loud enough. Um, quiet voices are bad. I'm not using Audacity because then I have to reboot my laptop. Really? Yes, it, it screws up my pulse audio completely. I have no audio afterwards. So I, <laughs> I try not to use it anymore. Because that wave file, you know? Yep. I mean, you've got 100%, so yep. you 100%. Yeah. So basically, um, I'm just going in my sound settings. Um, so in the input, I actually usually operate a lot lower, but then a lot of the other um, applications do an automatic adjustment of that particular yeah. gain. Yeah. So even though I probably use in, in practice a much higher gain, I actually don't see that with my settings. So they fiddle with it later on themselves. But yeah, so having, and I also had to always hold up my microphone that I was actually speaking properly into it rather than just having it dangling or whatnot. So that was definitely uh, something. But anyway, that was sort of like something where I was spending a few hours this afternoon on, um, trying to get something going. Um, but yeah, so I thought this is the, oops, uh, not quite so flesh um, side of um, running things. Um, another interesting um, sort of like tool is Whisper from OpenAI. Um, They've released a multilingual sort of like tool uh, where they can actually also basically translate um, the audio, not just basically transcribe, but at the same time trans uh, sort of translate as well. And they have also made some um, sort of like Python code available for using those models that they train. Unfortunately, they've only basically made the use of the trained models available and not how you can actually build your own models, which would have been far more interesting, but I guess that's their secret sauce, so they don't really want to uh, give that away too much. But anyway, I thought someone else might maybe want to play around with that and see uh, what other languages they can actually handle. So. Um, there are various models available. I'm not sure whether you really need to have a um, Yeah, that's on the GPU Whether you really have to actually run it on the GPU some of these models you can actually run on um, CPU only as well. So if you actually probably start with a tiny one which has relatively few parameters or variables that the network has to learn you, um, so you can might get away with that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it can get quite uh, memory hungry and you can imagine what actually Google's fancy, whoops, Ian, you popped, you popped up a menu. You triggered a menu. You triggered a menu. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you can, so Google's backend, if it's most likely running at its backend, will probably have some beefy hardware running there. And if I'm not sure actually how many users it can, can concurrently actually handle in its server, in its data centers. But anyway, that is sort of like my um, little spiel here, um, showing that you can do basic things at your end as well with what's out there. It's not as flash, but you. On the other hand, it does not run in the cloud. So this is something then that you might maybe consider when you're actually a bit concerned about privacy and whatnot, what you're actually sending out there. Because at the end of the day, I'm not sure what the um, terms and conditions are, whether they actually retain their right to record whatever you're saying and transcribing for further improving their models so that there will actually then people then listening to snippets of audio and then correcting basically the transcripts and that gets fed in into another training run for the model 
for continuously improving it. But yeah, so that's it, I think, from us here. Um, thanks for the very um, patient audience tonight. Thanks for sticking around for so long.